Welcome one and all to this 21st episode of DND Season 2. My name is Mike. And my name is Zoe. And today we are going to be working on our platformer game with Hans, the German bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who has mustachios that smile. Yes. Yes. They're very big. So the thing that we're working on now is level design and level logic in general. Uh, one thing that we've added last time, let's demo the game. One thing that we've added last time is coins. coins. And the issue with the coins is that I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this enemy. So the issue with the coins is that we are um, not, not picking it up when we're very very close. And sometimes we may be. The reason why this is is because our uh, character's uh, actual collider that does collide with triggers is this tiny capsule in here. So it doesn't really encompass the head. That doesn't feel very good, especially when his head starts, you know, moving about when he jumps and that sort of stuff. So we need to do a few things about that, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple of colliders to the character and those okay. colliders will not interact with anything other than with pick up balls. Okay. Okay. So let's begin with that. We're going to go to our, to our player, there's the model, etc. We're going to need a bunch of colliders here or something like that uh, to figure out uh, where the whole pickup stuff is, thing is, right? So let's find the head, that's a good place to start. There's the head, there's the face, there's the head, okay? What about the neck? Somewhere there, anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a collider and it's going to be a what collider? A uh, box collider. All right, and let's go with box. Because his head is quite a box. It's definitely quite a box, as you're saying. So we're going to move it on the x-axis. Oops. Oops, not like that. I didn't mean to resize it. Oops. I dumped some cards. Leave it alone, it's fine. Okay, so we've got the head here. Let's make the collider a little bit larger. This may be too much. 1.05. 1.05. 1.05. Okay, this looks acceptable, right? So now his head has a big, big collider. Okay, that's not too bad. Now let's give his spine a collider too. Maybe the hips. Yeah, the hips could be a good idea. So let's go with the hips. Box collider. Hmm. The hips may not be such a good idea because he has a pretty bent back if I remember correctly. So let's try the second spine. Could we just That's put better. him back to his normal position? Put him stuff? back to his normal, what are you talking about? Like put Hans back to the T-pose? Uh, you can force him into T-pose, I don't know how though. The The thing is, it depends on which which uh, animation the model has decided is gonna be its default for the moment. That you should be able to put him in T-pose, yeah, but we don't have an animation called T-pose here. Right, so he stays in this one for the moment. Uh, it doesn't matter for in-game, obviously. But so the spine was all right. Uh, another option that we've got is the root bone. Uh, if we add a box glider to the root bone, and then simply lift it up a little bit on the Z. Oh, again, undo for me. Say it properly, please. Sorry. Whoop. Okay. So there we go. Something like this, and let's make it a little narrower. 0 0.8, maybe. It's hard to say, but it looks about right. Let's do 0 0.7. Yeah, that looks okay. Now, the fact that it's a bit abundant around the character doesn't matter. We're not gonna be, oops, uh, yeah. We're not gonna be using these colliders for anything other than picking stuff up. So 0 0.7 may be a little bit too small. There, that's pretty good. Okay, they're not gonna collide with anything in practice. Uh, so, <clears throat> they're not going to be trigger, but they're not going to collide with anything. So, let's see if we have a layer for this. We don't, right? Mm -hmm. Let's rename this one to underscore player pickup. Oh, wait, I forgot the underscore. You put it. It's a long name, the layer. Yeah, lowercase p. Hit enter. Okay, so, the head is going to have player pickup. No, this object only. And the skeleton is going to have player pickup. 
no, this object only. Okay, let's apply this to Hans. Save. Right, so we need to now go to the physics settings, right? Mm -hmm. And the pickup, well, this thing that we just added collides with everything. But in our game, nothing collides with anything, right? But we have the player colliding with the pickup. We're going to remove that. We're going to make the player pickup collide with the pickup, like so. Okay. okay. And if I'm right, this should already work. Save. <clears throat> there should be absolutely no collision of any kind, but picking up coins should be now much easier. There. See? All you need to do is get close. And you pick up the coin. Mm. Ah 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 Doing. Ah no no. No, you Poor have Hans. failed. Hans is dead. Yeah, huh? Hans died. Huh? Oh, doing. I smacked my head. My German head. Oh, he's dead. Anyway, so there's no. I, I just get plain and I get all happy. That I'm <laughs> so he died again. <laughs> that's enough. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a PFX for the coins. How's that sound? Yeah, let's put a PFX for the coins. Okay. Do you for also when you pick them up? Is it? Do you also want the coins to display some text on top of them when you pick them up? Uh, I don't think that would be good. Okay. So it might be later, but I don't think now. Let's go take the PFX spawn and duplicate this one. Hit Control V. Okay. So. Let's drag it in. This is the PFX that we get when we spawn. Now, what's its problem? Uh, what what won't work for the coins? The coins are round and not flat on the floor. That's right. So okay. this concept will simply not work, right? Mm -hmm. But we can, eh, it's not there that, that bad. But we can do various little tricks. So one trick that we can do is we can go to the shape of the emission and change it from a cone to a sphere. It's already better, isn't it? Yes, but we should put it like right in the coin. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Uh, we will spawn it on the fly or something. Mm. Or we could have every coin have one. That's also an option. Which one would you prefer? Probably cheaper to have every coin have one. Yeah, probably. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to decrease the radius so everything comes from the exact center. Right? There's already a flash. I mean, everything seems to be pretty good. Maybe we can... Uh, give him more speed. How about this? Yeah. Does that look more satisfactory? Mm hmm More satisfying? Mm hmm Wah! Okay, the color seems to be already pretty good. So we're fine. Rename this one to PFX coin. Hit enter. Okay. And we're going to drag it. Oh. Hmm. Let's see if we can apply. It's called PFX spawn one there. I can see that. Let's rename this one to coin. It's the same word. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Now each of our coins, which is also a prefab, right, is going to have a PFX coin. Okay. Now what do we need to do? Reset, Reset the, the transfer. Right? That should do. Mm -hmm. Correcto? Yes. So, we're going to have a problem with this and you'll see what it is soon. We're going to hit apply on the coin for now. Now, every single other coin should get a PFX. And it did. Okay? So, we can now start coding. Save. <clears throat> Let's go take a look at the coin. Here's the pickup. Okay? So, it needs a reference to the particle and whatever else is where we need to put it yeah we need a reference to the particle system first okay so private mm -hmm. and call this one ps Oops, save. that's not that's not a semicolon no save okay <clears throat> good so the let's do it there so copy this and here you go if open round paste is null no that's not it is null yeah <coughs> mm -hmm. 
and here you go ps equals and I'm gonna let you do it you need to go find it right where is it so it's in the coin that's right we already are in the coin so we just go transform yep yeah. and then transform dot uh, get component uh, no it's not on the root I don't think let's see so that's the root coins coin yeah but it's not on the root you need to go inside and get pfx coin oh then so dot get find, find. Yeah. <coughs> pfx coin Oops, that's an he is our german bodybuilder <clears throat> he's what schwarzenegger always wanted to be but he's austrian so he can't so what else do you need there pfx coin Yep, then dot get component now. Of type particle system. Mm hmm Have you heard of the tab key? I have. There. Well, one character before the end, well done. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was like three. No, it was one. Literally one. Siste. That's what you wrote. Siste. <laughs> okay, so particle system, that's good. Now, uh, we don't pick it up at the beginning, right? We're going to pick it up once later. And when? When we collect it, right here. So here you can say PS. We can assume that everyone is going to have a PS, right? So PS dot play. Oops. So, is this going to work? Um, it... Look at the code there in collect. In collect. What's happening? C enabled. So coin that is C What's is C? let's see. coin I think. No collider, it's the collider. If the okay. collider the collider is false. So it means it's gonna be it means it's not gonna play because the collider's not gonna work. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be off. Collider's Next. not gonna work. Graphics that set up what are the graphics again? Look it up. It's in the code. Let's see. It's a game object. You're turning off a game object. What would the graphics be? The graphics are like... Not that difficult. The... the it's not the... How the coin looks like. Yeah. Which means what will it look like if the, they're false? What will it look like? Nothing. Hmm? What would you look like without your body? Nothing. Well, there you go. Next. Yes, stop play. So all it will show is the P. The particle effect. Is the particle effect. Return pick up type. Yeah, that's that's for the other scripts to worry about, right? So okay, let's give it a save. This should work. Now the reason why I thought it could, it may not work is because I thought we would turn off the entire coin, but we're not turning off the coin. We're only turning off its graphics. This means that the particle system is going to work because the particle system is not inside the graphics. Focus. The particle okay. system is not inside the graphics, it's out here. It's out there. This means that this will not be touched by it turning off. Right? Mm -hmm. So, it should remain on and everything should be fine. Here, try it out. See if you can pick up the coin successfully. So, let's see. Yes, there is the particle effect. Let's go to the next one. Looks pretty cool, too. Yeah. Whoa, that was nice. I think we need a particle effect for killing enemies. Do you notice the particle effect slows down with time? Why is oh, that? Yeah. Because everything slows down when Hans dies. Mm -hmm. Because it's depending on the on the it's dependent on the time scale. Whoa, that looked weird. You glided down. Physics. Of course, the inherent problem with uh, building the physics yourself is that while they are much more interesting than the default ones, they are not as robust. Not even close. So you can make lots of mistakes and lots of little bugs. Splat. Aren't you doing well? <laughs> well, I was doing way better than you who died right before your sec before your last enemy. Mm -hmm. So That's true actually. Boing. Double nice. Kill. Everybody's dead. Cool. Alright. So now what we're gonna do now is um, shall we make a PFX for killing the enemies? Uh, we haven't done that yet. So. 
Probably. Probably. Okay. What about PFX for you, Dine? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think I think it's worse for both of them because I think it's fine on its own with the animation and the PFX are just make the animation look bad. You're objectively wrong, but that's okay. PFX make everything better. There's games that are made entirely out of PFX. Oh. Only PFX. Oh. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Which is pretty incredible. Like, one is called Beat Hazard. It's ridiculous. There's bullets everywhere. Anyway. <clears throat> um, so, obviously objectively wrong is a joke. But... <clears throat> I'm just saying PFX is a really useful. Uh, anyway, so we're, we're done. Uh, what we should do at this point is uh, work on level logic, right? Because our level ends and nothing happens, right? Our level mm-hmm. start and nothing really happens. So maybe we should have some kind of go text appear in the middle of the screen when you spawn or mm-hmm. press start to play or whatever, right? And then when we conclude the level, which means what? We kill all the enemies or collect all the coins? Which of the two do you want to be the final condition? Or both? I think it could be, um, for this level, I think it should be both. No, it's not for this level. You need to make up rules and stick to them. Can we go like... In Super what? Mario, what's the end condition? Well, you don't kill all the enemies, you go past a certain point. You reach the exit, right? Do we have an exit? No. Do we want an exit? No. Okay, so what condition are we going to pick to conclude the level? Well, what if there are, in one place, there are, like, no coins, but it's all coin collecting? Can we, like, do both? So on one level we have enemies, and one another we We can. It's a schizophrenic game, but we can, yeah. It's a what? Schizophrenic game. It's a game that cannot decide what it wants to be. Generally speaking, the, the, the reason why I ask you what's the goal in Mario, the goal in Mario is always one and the same. Every single one Mario, bar none has one goal. Well, actually, wait a moment. Every single one of the platformers that you have played of Mario that isn't an RPG or other things, right, has one single goal. Go from point A to point B. It's a traversal game. All of the coins are optional. All of the enemies are optional. All of the pickups are optional. Everything is optional. In fact, many people who play uh, Mario with speed runs, which means they go really, 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 really fast, they pick up nothing. They fly through the level, because the goal is getting to the other side. For us, we should pick a goal, just like in the original Super Mario, it was getting to Peach. So it was also go from A to B. It was called Jumpman or whatever, right? But you had to avoid the barrels. Now we have a bunch of enemies. When we kill them, we could probably finish the level. I think that would make sense. Hmm? Yeah, probably. Hmm. So our game is going to be <clears throat> kill all the enemies, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Read the world of the walkers. Dun, dun, dun. For now, it's only walkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, later we're going to have other things. We'll see. Okay, so let's begin by uh, adding something to our game manager or something central, uh, right? Which is going to be our text. Perhaps the level container would be a good place to put that. All right, so what do we need? We need Text Mesh Pro. Let's mm-hmm. look at our assets. Do we have Text Mesh Pro? We have the packages. Look in the packages. Mm-hmm. We have the packages. Right so, down there, as you see. Yeah, we need to go to the package manager. Select XMesh Pro. Expand a bit. And, oh, I guess it's already installed by default. Let's go take a look. Windows, TextMesh Pro. Aha, we need to do a few things. Import TMP essential resources. Now, we don't care about examples and extras. We already know how to use this. So we're going to click on Import TMP essential resources. Let's see what it says here. Documentation, always a good idea to have. Resources, that's a few fonts useful to have. Okay, oh wait, there's more. Uh, shaders, absolutely we want to have them. This is how the um, Text Mesh Pro is able to draw itself. Okay, sprite assets, this is going to give us some emoji. That's fine. We can use smiley faces if we want to. Then style sheets. Uh, these are options about how text is styled, which is fine. TMP settings, this is very useful. Well, you can't go without, it won't work. Okay, now we're left to sprites. This is the sprites for the emoji. See them? Yeah, I see them. Okay, so, and I think it's got 
how you parse them anyway I won't explain that at the moment so we want all of this so we just leave this all tick and we select import we wait a bit it's gonna do its thing dun, 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 dun. and it's done it's right here so now we can create text mesh pro objects so let's do it right here let's create an empty and call it overlays Mm -hmm. Let's create a 3D object, text mesh pro text. So we got a text. Okay. Now let's see. Hans is going that way. This text is going this way. It's going to look more or less like this. What's the issue already? We need to bring it a little farther forward. That's right. Like that. All right. That's pretty good. Now let's massage this te this text a little bit. So we're going to click on the inspector again. In this. Ah, we should have done a canvas actually. Huh, we should have done a canvas. It's fine, I'll teach you about that some other time. So let's bring it forward to say 2. That's pretty good. Position 15, sounds sensible. With 20, sure, fine, whatever. Okay, now we need to pick a font. So the only font we got is Liberation for now. So let's do that. And it's got a Liberation material, drop shadow, or outline. These are all pre made for us. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make uh, a new one. Okay, so we're gonna go to this material. You see it's here, and you can duplicate this one. Hit Control D and rename this one to header. Hit Enter. Okay, now it will already exist in this drop down list. See, mm -hmm. now we can select it, and now we can modify it. So, for example, we can modify the face and the outline option. So let's go to outline, okay, and increase the thickness. So it's better and easier to see. Now, as we do this, you can see that it's starting to take over the white a little bit, right? That's yeah. okay. We can dilate the white to push everything out. Now, this causes a few small overlaps, but I think these are a small price to pay for much easier to read text that also looks kind of cool. Now what else do we want to do? You want to center the text horizontally, center the text vertically. And now let's write the word go. <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're going to have to do with this guy is we're going to have to display it and then hide it. Right? Mm -hmm. What are we going to use for that? Code? Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to be vaguer than that? We're going to use the computer. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. What? What specifically in code? Uh, coroutine. You don't remember coroutines anymore? Yes. Yes, you do or yes, you don't? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Coroutines are designed for that. Oh, by the way, you can bold the text if you want. Oh, I think that looks cool. Yeah, that looks good. What about... Oh, no, better. You can underline it. You can strike over it. You can make it force small, force large for small capitals, which is pretty interesting. Anyway, so let's stay with this for now. <clears throat> you can also change colors if you want. Which one do you want? Let's do some kind of green. Like darker, like this, or like this? Uh, somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, how's this? That's good. Okay. Because so, there's not much in our game right now that's green yeah that's a good call okay so what we're gonna do uh, now is we're gonna create uh, some kind of controller for this stuff right so let's um, add the text this text to the game manager for example so let's rename this one to level go so the text text go call it text go underscore go Hit enter. Yeah, save. <clears throat> okay, so we need to go to the game manager's code right here. We're gonna go all the way to the top. This is a singleton, right? So we can access it from everywhere, which is quite nice. Okay, and here we're gonna say, what are we gonna say? We're gonna public do, or private? We're gonna do a public. Mm, you would be right, but no. We're gonna do it differently this time. You'll see. So serialize field, square bracket. Huh? Huh? You need it reachable from the outside. C 
materialize field. There it is. Close the square bracket. Wait, wait if you need it reachable from the outside, then don't. Uh, this then is reachable just from the inspector, so we oh. can assign it. Yeah. Private. Hey, yeah, you make a good point. Uh, text mesh pro. Let's see what happens. Where is it in the list? Hey, it isn't there. Why is it not there? Oh, we need to add the class thing. The class thing? It's a library. Yeah, the library thing then. Mm -hmm. Using text. Nope. You need to know what it's called. Look at it. TM Pro, yeah. Mm -hmm. Semicolon. Okay, now you can go down here and this one, add the word pro at the end. Mm -hmm. Call it TM underscore and call it uh, go. Semicolon. All right, so we will be assigning it. We can assume we've already assigned it, right? So what we need to do for this fella, right, is we need to, um, we need to have a function that we can call that's going to deal with all of its properties to make it appear and disappear. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so what we're going to need is a bunch of stuff. So let's start here. First of all, square bracket, serialized field. So what do you need for anything that animates? Uh, you need a you need the cartoon. Yeah. What else? Some time thing. Time thing. Okay. What else? This is now not required but useful. Uh. If you have a time, right? What is what? What comes usually along with time? that we use all the time. Ah. Vote. Sure, that's just a data type. That's not what yeah. I'm talking about. Mm. If you go to buy groceries, yeah. right, it takes you a certain amount of time. Yeah. What does that time depend on? How fast you want to go. So, what do we need? Speed. We need the speed, okay. And then we also need some kind of trajectory to manage what happens. Mm -hmm. We're going to use an animation curve for that. And okay. now we're going to use LERPs. That There's, that's right, we're going to LERP something. That means we also need one last thing, though. What we're going to LERP. And what are we going to LERP? We're going to make the, the, the... We can make many things. We can make the text appear from the top and fall down and then go away. We can make the text, text sort of fade in and then fade out, which I think would probably be the best option. We could do that. Mm. What do we do in tabletop gear for the thing? A fade in and fade out. That's usually an easy thing to go for, right? So anyway, so serialize, let's begin one by one. So we said we are going to need a, a speed, you said, right? So serialize, private, to a field, private, float, full pat, <laughs> full pat, <laughs> flat, <laughs> float. So a private float, uh, we're going to call this one uh, <laughs> TM Go Speed. No, no caps. No caps. Just TM Go Speed. TM Go. I shouldn't put the underscore. Go Speed. Tell me call. Okay, now we need uh, an animation curve. <laughs> we're back. Serialized field still. Serialized field. Mm -hmm. Curve. Curve. Okay, now uh, curve underscore curve TM go. Underscore TM go. Semicolon. No, you forgot private, even though it's implicit. So copy it. Paste. Alright, so we got this. Now um, we need the coroutine you said. This one doesn't need to be visible. So private coroutine. Capital C, core underscore T T M go. Tenuma. 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 Okay. 
and I think one last thing that we need is going to be the color but not really the, the color is going to be fine we're going to deal with it directly inside the coroutine so as usual for each coroutine the way daddy likes to do it we have a structure of three separate methods right method one is start the coroutine method two is stop the coroutine and method three is the coroutine itself it's mm -hmm. not really a method it's an enumerator so let's begin with void start tm pro go or just tm let's go tm tm go okay Oops. okay now let's go with the stop one Mm -hmm. Now I enumerator, which you can call uh, TM go routine. Open, close rounds, squiggles. Okay. Let's say. call these and the routine at the end too. That sounds for me. Sounds good for me. Sounds good to me. Um. um but what I don't like is that this goes capital for the no. Right? All the same. Okay, good. So let's begin with stop. What do we do in stop? We check if the coroutine object is already used. Right? If. Coroutine tm go is not no. Team go is not no. Yeah, this is a bit weird. Yeah. Okay, what stop do we do? Coroutine. Stop coroutine. Stop. St who is doing all the typing? Right. I'll just copy this, it will be much faster. Okay. Now, now you want to start it. Before one. you start it, you stop it. Always. Okay. Stop. Nope. That's yeah, sure. Routine. And now close. And now and semicolon now enter now start it. No. So you need to assign it to the variables. So you say core yeah equals we'll start core oops core core teen. And now you need to feed it the name of the core team. What are you missing? Uh brackets. Okay, so now here what we're going to do is we are going to build a few variables on the fly. Let's begin with a float passing time. A frame. Float passing equals zero. Time okay. equals zero. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add a Start color and an end color. So wait a moment. You need to give it a color variable type, color, then s color, lowercase s. Equals. And for this one, we're going to say new color. Open round. Now, so how many elements does a color have? Uh, well, we have the alpha, the red, and the blue, and the green. So that's four. four. What's the order of them? Red, green, blue, alpha. Correct. So, for red, what color are we going to take? Uh, what number you mean? Yeah, sure. Where are you? Where are we going to take that information from? The. I don't know. Is a valid answer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, go go to TM Pro. No, just type type. Okay. TM go, whatever you call it. TM go. Uh, this one. Hit tab. Dot. Color. Capital. Dot. R. Comma. Now you're going to do the green. We're so taking the color that the thing already has. Yeah. So I copy this. And I'll put it here and I'll go comma. Then I'll put it there. Now here I go B, and there I go G. So for the start color, do you want to see the text when you start? Uh, no. Okay, so what should the alpha be? Uh, 
a hundred percent is black, right? No. No white. Invisible. Alpha is not a color. Alpha is inv is, inv is visibility. Mm -hmm. Transparency. So, how transparent will it be if you say you 100%. don't want to see it? So you don't want to see it at all. A hundred percent. A hundred was a percent symbol. <laughs> no, not that. What's a hundred percent? Whoa. Whoa! What? I opened. <laughs> I opened the definition of int. Uh, what is the? What is a hundred percent? It's a fraction. It's the whole th Yeah, it's a fraction so? and the whole and the everything. Whole? So? So we need float. Like, oh, what? dear. I put it away. There. That's better. That's not 100%. Not even close to 100%. You're off by factors of 10. You said it's one hole, didn't you? Yes. I heard it. It came out of your mouth. How many holes did you put there? One. Did you? I can read. It doesn't look like one to me. It says a hundred. Mm. One. You said one hole, didn't you? Yes. Well, there you go. One. Now, problem. One hole doesn't mean fully transparent. It means fully visible. Oh, then zero. Okay. There we go. Missing a few pieces. Missing that. Missing another thing, but it's going to let you get away with it. <laughs> Save. Okay, now we need an ending color. Now the ending color, you should have it E. Fully visible, no? Mm -hmm. Put a one. Save. Okay, good. Now we got this, we got this, we got everything we need. So we can begin actually doing the loop. This is gonna be a while loop. So while. Tab, tab. Open round. Ah, oh, that may work. Yeah, hit tab twice. Let's see what happens. Yay! It says true. It's useless. <laughs> okay, copy, passing, type, paste, well, lower or equal. 1F. Hit enter. Hit enter. Why 1F? Uh, colors don't... Uh, well, the thing doesn't, st doesn't start from zero. It does start from zero, right here. Yeah, I see. If you said we were going to lerp. Yeah, if it's... We need a controller. Controllers for lerps go between... Up. They go between zero up. Zero and what? Zero and the end point. No, not the controller. The controller goes between zero and... One. Yes. Zero is nothing. One, is, one everything. is everything. No percent, zero percent, hundred percent. That's it. That's why we're checking that we're n lower or equal to one, and then we're going to. If gonna you stop. went lower than zero, then that's already nothing. So. Sure. Actually, I don't know. Hmm. Lower or equal or lower? Eh. It's the same. Who cares? Uh, this is going to be the difference. Is going to be minuscule. Now, what we're going to do today? We're going to do something a bit different that you haven't done before. You're going to say passing time plus equals. So you're gonna make it go up, right? Yeah. By what do we usually do it? Time dot delta time. Right, let's do time dot fixed delta time. Oh. Why? This one is almost on every PC a little bit slower than the other one, which means we're gonna have to do less operations. But it's gonna look so close to perfect that you're not even gonna Oops. notice. Times what? the speed. There it is. Now let's skip this line. Let's go to the next one. Yield return. Mu. Wait for. Fixed update. Open close round. Semicolon. This waits for the same as this amount of time. Mm -hmm. It went, waits for the, the end of the fixed update cycle. Okay. Which lasts one fixed delta time. Okay. Okay, which in our project is set to 0 0.02. Mm. Very, very short time. Okay, now finally we can do the actual lerp of the text. So we can say tmgo.color No, I think I got it wrong. I think it's an underscore. tmgo.color equals 
And let's see if we can figure this out. So this needs to be the start one. No, this needs to be a lerp first of all. So I need to go vector three. Vector three? It's not a vector three. What is it? It's a color. Then color. So color dot lerp. Open round. Now you said what? Now I need to put the first color, which is S color. Mm -hmm. And then? Then I need to do E color. Mm -hmm. And then? E color. And then I need to do the animation curve. Okay. Then so. think every curve starts with curve. Just start typing curve and you'll see it. Well, I'm already here, so I might as might well, as well. Fair enough. copy it. Back. Uh, might as well copy it, slow poke. Uh, Done. <clears throat> Fail. Oh, wait. What do you need to do with the I curve? I need to evaluate it. Not well, to not really. Evaluate. It needs to evaluate something. What What does it need to evaluate? Passing time. Uh huh. Because passing time is our controller. What does a curve do? It changes how it, mo how it behaves. Save. Okay, so that, that'll do, basically. That's it. Um, so all we need to do now is assign all of those variables. Let's wait a little bit. Hey, there's our friend. <laughs> right. Every now and then it goes like, I'm going to fail now. <laughs> Save. <laughs> Here, get a proper. Air. <laughs> yeah. Say the Yeah. Save. <laughs> okay. I'm now going to compile properly. Thank you. There. Okay, so, go speed. Let's give it a relatively f slow speed, like one. Even yeah, let's say one second. So it'll take one second. Now, dm go, drag the go in. There we go. And now the curve. Now, how does the curve have to have to move? Uh, since we're starting from nothing to all, then we need to go from down to up. Down to up and whatever. Okay, so like this. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. What's gonna happen here? It's gonna. Oh, it needs to go back down. It needs to go back down. So it can't. So let's be find that. one that goes up and down. Okay. I so think one that goes up really fast and then plummets down over time. This one stays up at the top for a bit. I think this will be the best. Mm. Okay. So boom. Let's do that. So now, all we need to do is we need to. Uh, just, uh, we can't remove the text because we haven't assigned any text. But we would need a way to hide this guy, right? For now, we're just going to do this. i have lowered the alpha. It's not ideal. There's better ways. Okay? But here we go. Uh, wait a moment. We need to call it. Every time we start the game, right? So when you are, okay, update, reset level. So that's where we call tm go, tm go so start tm go copy this guy paste it here whoops my bad paste it here semicolon save let's see add the controller press and start go oh. that works right yeah we should get a better go. text though you want better font yeah next time because we don't well, want actually, to bore our getting 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 fonts is ridiculously slow. Yeah, uh, I know we don't want to bore our audience. But I've gotten a bit better now. I know certain tricks to nice. find to find fonts. Come here. Where is Daddy? Oh, <laughs> dead. Dead. Oh, oh, there's Mr. Bouncy. We found issue. the crazy bug that breaks everything completely. Now, before we continue, let's try and see what the situation is. <clears throat> with our animator for hands okay grounded so it's in grounded locomotion he's walking so the problem isn't that the problem is something else the problem is something else let's take a look at the player here character motor seems fine alive is fine can jump is no so can jump remains on no, which is interesting. Um, Hans' expressions are irrelevant. 
freeze position, freeze rotation, blah, blah, blah. Nothing's happening. Use gravity, says no, which is normal. Um, character controller, user control, enemy type, none. Movement input, facing rotation, face rotations. So something's going on with the velocity of our character. It's very... But look, he gets slower, 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 until he falls down. Yeah. I can't jump, which is really interesting. You also can't kill enemies, it looks like. Yeah. Let's turn on gizmos. Oh, I can see something interesting. Look the ray casting, yeah. The ray casting. What's happening with the ray casting? The bottom one is showing. The bottom one is just not there. They're going up. Hans thinks he's falling up. That's the issue. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go and find out how it is that we figure out whether the ray casting happens down or doesn't happen down. So it's in character motor, <clears throat> right? Check grounded should should be happening. Let's see if it's in fixed update or wherever. So check grounded. Hit Control F. There it is. If not, just jumped. Is alive. Check grounded. Blah. blah. Okay. So if not, just jumped. That's it. That's the only time. So, I guess just jumped. Is the problem. Is the problem. So, let's see if that's the case. If that's the case, then dying just as we jump should be the issue. Yeah. So, if you uh, jump and immediately restart. Then he turns off. That's right. And does that mess. See? Okay, we discovered a bug. That's easy. So all we need to do is, as soon as we set up, we say just jumped is false, which we forgot here. What's, what does it say here as well? Just hit up. Let's turn, let's turn all of these off. Grounded, can't jump, can't interact. Let's turn everything off. So here you say grounded equals false. Yeah equals false semicolon just jumped equals false mm -hmm. um, just hit up equals false just mm -hmm. just hit up equals false Okay, give this a save. Save for now. This may be sufficient. Let's see. So now we're simply going to try and press A and then immediately start. See what happens. Fixed. That's what had happened, right? Now we can turn off the gizmo. Okay, so uh, don't remember what we were going to check. Oh, yeah, we were checking the something go so maybe we could use that particular text to display other text for example when we've won you have won mm -hmm. or when we've lost you have lost in nine minutes that's okay so shall we do you've you've died or that sort of stuff or we just see that it's brilliant uh finish the level first we want me to finish the level okay the first co and collect all the coins. Working on it. Nice. Nice. Okay. So. <clears throat> so we should use the same text again. Then perhaps calling it go is a bad idea. Maybe we should call it header. Mm -hmm. Hit enter. Let's do a couple of replacements here. 
this is going to cause us to redo the variables hit control uh, r twice header hit enter control r twice header enter control r twice header enter and control r twice header save okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go reassign these but there's a few more things that we can do to our game to figure things out so first of all the curve it worked fairly well i would say well it were those messy curves i have all sorts so the header speed let's make it a little slower it may be cool uh so if i make it slower i surely don't want to make it faster do i okay so i made it a bit slower i'm putting the header in here okay now we are gonna do um a few things we are gonna um change the way this behaves a little bit because we want to use this as a header now for all sorts of texts right this mm -hmm. may also mean we need different color right for example the color red should mean you're dead right mm -hmm. so the color yellow could mean you won sure let's make a public enum enum and call this one uh, header type sure no just header type we're gonna need to change the text too right you don't want it to say go when you die mm -hmm. so none as usual thanks geek and gale we'll see you later bye okay now the first one you can call it uh, go or start uh, start it won't let you know, it? Oh, yeah, it will start comma then die or death And then win that's it for now that's enough right save okay so here we're gonna create two arrays one of strings so serialized field private string and call this one uh, header texts and hit enter Serialized field, private, private, uh, color, array, header text colors. There we go. Say, okie dokie. So, <clears throat> What we're gonna do now is we're gonna use these okay to use these what we're gonna need is here we're gonna have to request one of these enums so header type so type header type yeah done space dot I mean, dot no space you're right uh, my bad space and call it HD or something yeah then request the same uh, no let's request a string here so go string text comma uh, color color now instead of using the tm color here we're going to use the actual color just like that so we're going to remove this 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 and this and this and this save Okay. We're also going to change the text right away. So we're going to say tm header, header, there it is. No, you keep on not typing the underscore, I don't know why. And also you keep on not looking at the list. Look, it's right uh, here. Dot set text, open round, text, close round, let me talk. Uh, so this is gonna give it the test we feed it Now you see we still have errors these errors come from here it they depend on this right so put a switch just type SWI SWI hit 
tab twice and now type HT hit enter and okay so we don't need none and we don't need default yeah we're gonna change this so that the text is optional so let's cut this text and put a comma space paste equals empty quotes quote quote save okay <clears throat> right now we got the text and it's optional so if you receive nothing what happens it will display nothing mm -hmm. okay we'll hide the thing so in start what we're gonna do cut this paste it here and here and here and in TMG routine here you need to tell it what color you want so the color we're gonna want is type colors there it is this one square bracket open around you need to cast it as an int so int close the round and now you want to tell it ht close the square bracket comma texts header text open a square bracket open around int close the round close the square bracket save Okay, so as you can see, this will apply to all of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to be a bit different. We're going to type case space tab dot none colon enter it to break. <coughs> Let me go and copy this, paste it here, and we're simply going to say uh, so we don't have a color, so that's a problem. We are simply going to say uh, tm dot, I mean underscore rather, tm underscore header dot color. So we're going to send it the default color it already has. And for text, we're going to send it nothing. Move another round. And for everything else, so here you're going to type default done. Okay, and now you're gonna delete this. Save. So every single other one of them is gonna send its own HT information to this side. So now we're gonna be able to apply all of this here. We're gonna change the text right away, and then we're gonna change the colors and do whatever it is that we usually do with the color. Okay, so save. Now let's remember the order of these enums, right? So we've got um, start, death, and win. You can remember that, right? Mm, start, death, and win. Okay, so now we need to wait a little bit We've got a compiler. Oh, um, hey, header type. So just sort of H. There it is. Tab dot. What? What? Which one do we call here? Dot. We call start. Save. Okay. So now we're calling start. So it start something die. Mhm. Mm no, it start die win. But anyway, expand all both of them. Okay, put three on both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hit enter. Now go the first one. Yeah, that one. That's for go. So that one we, we want to change. Green. We need to change the alpha. Just don't worry about it. it. Select one of the green options there. Who cares? Just one of them. No, 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 no. I mean here between the boxes. There, that one's fine. Close. Now the next one. This one is die, so red. And the last one is win, you said you want yellow, right? I'm trying to find that, that one's fine. That one looks like close. yellow. Now go to header text. So the first one needs to say go. The second one needs to say, oh no. The third one needs to say yes. How do you spell that? Y A S S S. No, no not pass. Y A S. Exclamation mark. Yes. Two of them. Just two. Great. Save. Okay, so we got yes, oh no, etc. So for now, it's only going to say go. And next time, we're going to add the others. Let's see. Go. go. Well, I guess we could do the, the death one as well. So let's go get when when 
uh, one hands dice, right? Which would be in character controller, maybe. Hey, I turn around, blah, 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 kill character. Set active, false. Um, let's see, character motor, blah, 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 blah. Death routine, die squish, die if your hands. So right here, you can go to game manager. Okay. Aim. Game manager. Script. Script. Dot start. Oh, oh, what does that mean? They are private. Public. Yeah, and now back to here. St type start again. Open run. Tab. Dot. Die. Yes. Close run. Semicolon. Now I've got a question for you. Do you think that um, <clears throat> do you think that in our game uh, the text should depend on the slowdown of the rest? Because I don't think so. Uh, I think that the text should just appear quickly on its own without yes. caring about the yeah. fact that the time is slowed down. Yeah. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to make a change here. So here you want to type unscaled. Delta time, fixed unscaled delta time. Yeah, save. And this probably won't work. So let's copy all of this and here type no. Type wait for seconds here. Okay, wait for seconds real time and here paste that. Save. Now we're waiting for exactly the same amount of time, right? In real time. So, save. So this should all work now. Let's see if it's true. Let's see if it's true, fine people. <clears throat> okay, so it says go. Let me let me kill myself. Oh, oh no! no! Mamma mia! <laughs> go. Oh no! In Mario and Luigi passes into his story, he, also, he oh, actually oh, says no. Mamma mia when he dies. I know. <laughs> Which is kind of weird because Mamma Mia means like it's used for other contexts. Anyway. Oh, oh, oh no. no! See, it works. You play it. Now you do one more play and then we stop. <laughs> Whoa. It's going fairly well here. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Well, I did most people. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye.